What's up, guys, and how is everybody doing out there? I hope everybody is doing well. Yes, this is a talking head video. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, crime. Crime here in the Philippines, specifically crime here in Angeli City, Philippines. Crime is all over, all over the world. It's terrible back in the States. Crime is up. Violence is up. People think by escaping to the Philippines that they're not going to be a victim of, of crime. I'm here to tell you that you can be a victim of crime. Is it vicious like it is back in the States with you know multiple shootings and everything like that? No. For the most part, Filipino people are very laid back, very mellow people. Throw a little red horse in and uh, it can be different. I... Watched a video this morning, all right, YouTube video, gentleman that lives here, and he was a victim of a home invasion, and he went on to tell his story, and I thought, you know what, <clears throat> this gentleman is, is giving out good advice in his video. It's a small channel. Not many people are going to see that, um, but you know what, I want to share the story he told on his channel about what had happened to him. Like I said, he was a victim of a home invasion, him and his girlfriend. They live in a gated community. When you live in a gated community, you think you're safe, right? You think you're safe. And I'll get back to the, the gated community issue. You're in it. There's one way in, one way out. Security guard there, um, letting people in and out. You have a wall that goes up around your gated community, and you think you're safe, as you should feel safe in a gated community. You're paying dues every month for security. You should feel safe. Like I said, I'll get back to this gated community and security. Uh, so the gentleman want to want to tell about his story. He lives on a second floor. He said, middle of the night, actually four o'clock in the morning, he said he was woken up. He said he's, I think he said he's light sensitive. So he thinks with the light being on in the room, is that that's what made him wake up. He said he woke up to a Filipino creeping on his bedroom floor. Could you imagine that? Can you imagine being in your home where you should feel safe, living in a gated community where you should feel safe to wake up to a Filipino creeping on your bedroom floor? So what did he do? And, and this is some of the advice that, you know, his advice, I'm like, this is spot on. You know, you figure... <clears throat> Back in the States, how did you defend your house? Well, back in the States, <coughs> depending on where you live, if you didn't have a felony, you could own firearms. I owned firearms. I had shotguns. I had a nine millimeter. I had a 38. It was in my room. You can protect your house. You can protect yourself. Here in the Philippines, foreigners can't own a firearm. However, my wife can. My wife can. There's certain things she would have to follow to get a firearm. He, she can own one. So there you are. How do you protect yourself? Should you have a bolo in your room? A bat in your room? Who knows how the laws work here? All right. You go after somebody. <clears throat> they don't have a, a weapon on them. Can you be charged now? Because you used a weapon to defend yourself. I don't know. Something that a lawyer could probably tell you. So what do you do? And this was good advice he gave. All right. Make noise. He made noise. 
he noticed the bedroom door was also open. So he started making noise. He started yelling. <clears throat> he just started making noise. <clears throat> Good advice. It's the element of surprise. You now have surprised that burglar that entered into your apartment, into your safe space. You surprised him. The gentleman, I guess, got up and ran out. Good advice. Good advice. He also stated he had CC. I think he stated he had CC CCTV cameras. Got the guy on CCTV camera. However, what do you got? You get a guy dressed up, probably wears a full wrap around his face, disguises himself. You don't know who he is. All you see is a person. That could be anybody. All right. Gentleman went down to the security gate. The people that are supposed to keep you safe, right? Went to the female, said to her about calling the police. Somebody broke into my house, call the police. You know what she told him? I don't have a phone. I am going to call bullshit. Bullshit on that. Let me tell you why. You show me one Filipino male or female, that doesn't have a phone. Bullcrap. They sit in those shacks, because I know because I've pulled up to these shacks. They're there on their phone, texting away, doing what they got to do on their phone. Bullcrap. Bullcrap. You had a phone. <laughs> you had a phone. Then where's your partner? He's sleeping. Sleeping on the job. Here's the thing. You don't know if these security people are in on the gig or not. I have driven through, quote, gated communities with security guards. I have driven in, driven right past them. The old little wave. Hello, hello, little wave. They don't check. I think one, one place, one time, did check, actually asked me to keep my ID there with them. Told me I would get it return. When I returned out, they would give it to me. That's good security. All right. Why don't they have CCTV cameras pointing at people coming in and people leaving? Remember, you pay a monthly fee for security. You mean to tell me they can't get cameras? However, I guarantee you, if they did have cameras, it'd be like, sorry, sir, our system's down. Well, it's probably been down forever. Why can't security gate people look at a vehicle and say, hey, no plate, no entry? Because sometimes these people will come in. Why don't they record these plate numbers as people come in and come out? That way, if something happens, okay, when did this, when did this break and entering happening? between this time and this time. Now you got a running log because you don't know if they're involved in a crime or not. You don't know. They're getting paid next to nothing. They don't care about you. A lot of them will look at you because you're in a gated community and, and, and you're renting or living in a very expensive place. They don't care about you. They're, they could be jealous of you. They're, they could be jealous. Here's these rich people. Eh, they think they're better than us. They don't care. If you have a gated community, day or night, why isn't there a rover? We call them rover. When I worked at the jail, a rover roved around inside the wall, outside the wall for security reasons. Why don't they have a rover? I think I spoke to a friend of mine. He's in a gated community. He said, yeah, they got rovers, but you know what? They sleep at night. For You're paying these people next to nothing. Well, guess what? They're going to do next to nothing. They're a body taking up a space when they're supposed to be protecting and at least monitoring people coming in and out of a gated community. Here's another thing. He said this has happened three times in his community, his gated community, three times. 
I would think after the first time, the people living there would be, you know, what's going on? What's going on? Was the person targeted? I don't know. You don't have to be targeted. You could be just randomly picked like the lottery. You randomly pick a number and guess what? You win. You could be randomly picked. People sometimes, here's another thing. And I'm not saying this gentleman, I'm talking about in general. You got a Filipino girlfriend. You're a single guy. She likes you. She relies on you. Her family relies on you. Something doesn't, something doesn't work out. You and her break up. Well, now she's mad. Now she's mad. Who's to say she don't tell a, a family member who's just rotten? Hey, go break into this guy's place. I'll tell you where he lives. Let's clean him out. You don't know. A gated community. You got the wall around, all the way around. Okay. Everybody inside that wall has got money. You're a potential target. Well, you never think about what's outside that wall, on the other side of that wall. What if the community on the other side of that wall is not a good community? What if there's drug problems? What if there's crime in that community? Well, what are they doing? They're sitting there looking at that wall saying, hmm, all I got to do is get over that wall to where the rich people live. So I've heard that they're scaling walls in these gated communities. They don't even have to ride through that front gate and robbing people by scaling that wall. Why don't they put double concertina wire around that wall? Those people are paying for that security inside that wall. Why don't they put electric fences up on the, around that wall? Well, concertina wire is better because you don't have to main. Well, you, you do have to maintain it. However, with an electric fence line, uh, you know the power could accidentally get shut off because they don't want to pay the extra bill. I've heard that. The gentleman did also make a statement, and he said, "You know, I I, I would feel better." living in a condo. Guys, I have even heard condos being robbed. If you had here, back to the example, I'm with a girl. All right. She's my girlfriend. They've seen security has seen me go in and out of the condo with her many times. The girl has gone in and out of the condo many times on her own because security has seen her with me. And they think, okay, we know she's with him. But they're not there when, say, something goes bad and they break up. So this girl now, security has seen her with you all this time, thinks, oh, she's coming in to see him. She might be coming in to rob your place. She might be coming in to check doors to see if doors are unlocked in the condo. Go into that door and rob a place. Don't have to be your place. It could just be that random door that happens to be open. So you're not always safe even in a condo. It all boils down to security. The people that are in charge of your security, where you live, gated community, condo. It all boils down to them. And are they involved? He also stated, and I agree with him with this 100%. He said, you know, living in Angeles City, you have all the perks here. If restaurants, malls, uh, immigration. You can go out. You can enjoy yourself. All the perks are here in Angeles City for Westerners. He did say, that he felt safer out in the province where his girl lived. And I can completely understand that. People think because they're in an area where there's all other expats and Westerners, I feel safe. I feel safe. You're not safe. You're a target. You are a target. We lived over in hence, well, eh, Malabanas. We were in an area where 
there were a lot of Westerners. And at least two to three times a month, I would hear about snatch and grab. Girlfriends of Westerners. They ride by, snatch their jewelry, snatch their purse. Westerners snatching their phones out of the... You're not. You're, you're a target in these areas. Where I live right now, I'm surrounded by Filipinos. They're around me. I treat them with respect. They treat me with respect. I help feed them on occasions, when parties. They feed us. We get along perfectly fine. That's my security. That's one of my securities. Why? Because there's eyes everywhere looking, constantly looking around. They've even, I've even, they've even told us, hey, there's, you know, there's somebody roaming around and we got an eye on them because they don't belong here. So they keep an eye out for each other and the people in the area. There's a sorry, sorry store across the street. There's eyes there all the time, all the time. Same way within the province where Lut lived. When I lived out there, I remember I was, I was, uh, walking down the road there in the, in the brown guy and this guy comes blowing by me on a motorcycle and there are people from that brown guy chasing this guy throwing stones and you know and, and yelling i'm like i told her, what, what's that all about she said this guy came in there he didn't belong in there they didn't know him from a hole in the wall he ventured in there and was roaming around they realized this guy was up to no good so those people in that barangay, they took that security into their own hands. They, they, don't, they don't like that. They take it into their own hands. But I agree 100% with him. I feel safer in a province. I feel safer living around Filipinos. Yes, they might not have much, but you know what? They're happy. They're smiling. They give. Those are the people that I would rather live around, personally. But some people, they just won't take the advice. Eh, he's talking about this. I only want to hear about sunshine and rainbows in the Philippines. Well, then do what you got to do. I mean, don't complain then when, you know, something happens. And you know what? Here's another thing. Back in the States, say your house gets robbed and you're in a the city. They're going to turn around and the police are going to, you file a report. Police are going to follow CCTV cameras. All right. Boom. Follow. Next block. Follow. Next block. Follow. They can zoom in on your plate. They can see you. You know, you think you got away. So now I'm going to 7-Eleven and I'm going to get me uh, something to eat or whatever, McDonald's. All right. Boom. Now we got, you know, CCTV cameras inside the 7-Eleven. We can see his face. We got him. That does not exist here. Maybe in a bigger city. Maybe Manila. Maybe in a very, very rich Rich, rich area doesn't exist here. You can file a report. I'm going to go file a report at the police station. That's all it is, is a report. There's no money in these police departments to follow up with this. They're not going to go, okay, let's see if we can catch them on the next CCTV camera. It doesn't exist. It's just the paperwork. It's going to be filed. It doesn't happen. That's just what it, that's just the reality of it. However, like I said, in a very rich, upscaled, say, gated community, where all the super rich, I'm not talking, you know, American rich, I'm talking super, super, super rich, like uh, Elon Musk rich of the Philippines, guarantee you, if an issue like that happened, they would find a guy because money talks. Uh, but let me leave you with one more advice that this gentleman gave, and I thought, great, great advice. If you live in a home, no matter where you live here in the Philippines, if you're renting a home, it's a little difficult, say, in a condo. Get a dog. A dog is your security. You guys know we have three dogs, all right? But Choi, <laughs> a little pug who, uh, well, little ankle biter. However, I, I've seen uh, but Choi kind of get mean and nasty and try to go after some people that we knew in, that we invited into our, <laughs> into our place. Get mean and nasty, all right? We got the Rock, Rocky. 
Rocky's our outside dog. He's always roaming around outside. He'll bark at people if they come up to the gate to scare them off. He's very protective. He'll, he'll even bark at kids that will sit outside and play. Very protective. And then we got B2, little fat boy. He's an inside dog. He'd rather be inside than outside. He sleeps inside. He'll sleep in our room sometimes. He'll sleep in the kids' room. Sometimes he'll sleep out in the living room. But they're protective. That is one of the best security animals you could get. I remember back in the States, I had a beautiful, beautiful Rottweiler. Picked her up at the adoption center. The best dog I ever owned. Best dog. That was great advice. He gave out a lot of good advice. If you happen to be in that horrific situation where somebody's in your house and you wake up, yell, scream, holler, the element of surprise, um, a dog, you never know. You never know when it can happen. You never know if you could be a target. You just don't know. But... I hope this helps somebody out. I, I just wanted to share his story because, like I said, it's not a big channel, but I looked at that advice and I thought, this is amazing advice he can give. Amazing advice. And uh, if it helps people out, great. Um, but if you want to, if you still feel safe coming here and, you know, living in a gated community and you think you're safe, then. It could happen to you. So anyways, guys, I figured I'd share that and uh, help somebody out. Um, great. Uh, remember, once again, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. There's crime here and there's crime around the world. And it's just, it just is.